who are who have been doing this for a long time and you know inventing the practice inventing the practice really as as they go along right and they're building sort of the the, the history and the process by which people engage with communities and there are lots of ways of doing it right there are you know the artists who live in the communities where they work right they work with their neighbors and there are other people who do projects that are shorter term they pop in they pop out both kinds are supported by a blade of grass. For anybody who came in late, um, I'm Elizabeth Grady. I'm the programs director at a blade of grass. And so um, I'm one who's um, uh, sort of in charge of answering questions, basically, about our new socially engaged fellowship workshop. Um, one of the things that, that was really important to us as an organization for these workshops is letting the artists speak first. Um, we're a very artist-centered organization. We're focused on supporting artistic practice in as many ways as we possibly can, and we hope to continue to grow that in the future. Um, and the organization was founded in 2011 by Shelley Rubin. Our executive director, uh, Deborah Fisher, will be here in just a little while. Um, and it was funded very specifically in order to support socially engaged art. Because it was felt that this is the kind of art that often falls through the cracks in terms of institutional support. When you think about museums, it's harder for museums to support it. There are definitely exceptions. The Bronx Museum, the Queens Museum, there are other examples as well. Uh, but the idea was to, to find a way to really support artists in what they do. Um, the organization, as you can see in our little uh, here, nurtures socially engaged art. So the idea is not just to make projects, right, but to support process and to support learning. Um, and uh, this is reflected in our mission. Uh, we provide resources to artists who demonstrate artistic excellence and serve as innovative conduits for social change. We evaluate the quality of work in this evolving field by fostering an inclusive, practical discourse about the aesthetics, function, ethics, and meaning of socially engaged art that resonates, hopefully, uh, within and outside the contemporary art dialogue. The idea for us is to support work that isn't just for an art audience. Right? We want this work to, to be uh, interesting and understandable to those outside the art world. Um, and that word, um, that word inclusive is crucial. We avoid art speak in what we do. We avoid it on our website. We avoid it in our programming wherever possible. Um, it doesn't mean that we're excluding the art community in any way, right? The art community is part of the broader community, right? And so they're gonna understand what's happening. But the idea is that in order to make community-based art responsive to communities, it has to be something that's comprehensible. This isn't about talking down to people. This is just about keeping the, the dialogue on an even playing field, right? Um, so what I'd like to uh, talk about a little bit, oops, we have a picture issue. Um, well, we'll just leave it. Um, is um, kind of what we fund, what we don't fund. Um, there'll be plenty of time afterward for questions you can ask as a, a group, and then also we'll have time and a little reception afterward for you to engage with different members of the organization. Um, but I just want to kind of run through some of the material that's on our website and make sure that it's clear. Because what, what we're really concerned about is an organization that, that strives to be as respectful as possible towards the artists that we support, is we don't want people going to a lot of effort for things that just aren't a good match, right? I don't know about you guys, but as somebody who has a background in curating, I've applied for grants that seem to be a good match for projects, and they just weren't, right? We don't want anybody going through the work of doing an application if it's not a good match. And so it's important for us to, to be very transparent with you all. So what we fund are socially engaged projects that promote art as a catalyst for social change. That can be a pretty broad, area, right? And we leave it broad on purpose. Uh, we fund projects that feature artists in leadership roles, right? Places where artists really take the, the initiative and where they really um, have sort of a control over their own artistic destiny and their, their aesthetic destiny. 
Uh, we fund dialogue-based projects that emphasize active and sustainable partnerships with communities. Uh, the idea is that there's an interaction. It's not just sort of a lecturing too, but it's really a giving back, and that's, that's something that John certainly addressed in his, his words. Uh, we fund projects in which co-creation with non-artists is part of the process, and we value process over product. Relationship building, problem solving, this, it, you know, it's different for each project, right? But there's a broad, uh, a broad field in which process is a focus, and we as an organization understand that. We're not just asking you what's gonna happen. What we're interested in is how it's going to happen, because as I'm sure so many of you know, you can say, well, I think this is gonna happen, but you get sort of a third of the way into something and you realize that's not going to happen at all. It's gonna be something over here that's much more interesting, right? Um, and so we support that process. Um, pro we, we fund projects in which artists engage with community members as equal partners on locally relevant issues or globally relevant issues as they apply to the local context. Um, and this is key here um, at the bottom. We provide funding with minimal restriction and budget line items may include things like living expenses that are not direct project expenses. Our socially engaged art fellowships, our fellowships, excuse me, I'm a little bit out of breath. I've got kind of pushing on my dad now. Um, uh, the, actually, maybe I'll take the microphone. I don't usually uh, use the crutch, but maybe they will. Um, so the uh, direct project expenses are the things that you usually see grants funding. Right? They want to know where each penny went. How many paper clips did you buy with the money they gave you? Our grants are $20,000, and we expect that you're going to have to spend some time on your art. Therefore, you're not going to be able to work at a normal job while you're doing it, right? And so paying your rent is actually something that's completely OK as one of the line items in the budget. So I want to kind of foreground. Um, what we don't fund comes next, and not by way of being negative, uh, but uh, we don't fund a lot of studio practice, a lot of exhibitions, right? We don't fund traditional kinds of practice, typically. There are exceptions, but um, we don't typically fund projects in which the focus is on producing objects for display, uh, we don't focus on exhibitions. We don't focus on residencies or stu uh, studio practice, except when those feed directly into a community-based project. Okay? Uh, projects that lack co-created outcomes and or community engagement are also not favored. As an organization, we focus on community-based work. Right? That's a choice that we've made. There are lots of other grants out there that support residencies and other kinds of things. Uh, and so we've, we've sort of taken a stand in terms of the sort of art that we want to fund, which is community-engaged art that promotes social change. Eligibility. Uh, so just really briefly, um, uh, individual artists or artist collectives, sorry, I forget that we're not synced. <laughs> um, Individual artists or artist collectives um, are eligible. If you're collected, submit a single application. Okay, um, don't submit multiple applications. Is that too close to there? Like, can you come up here? Yeah, no, I've come like all the way over here. Um, the uh, the applications can't come from students. Um, we're, we're shooting for artists who have established their practice a little bit, right? Um, we're looking for artists who are at least 25 years of age. And are legal U.S. residents or U.S. citizens? Now, I want to point out that this isn't because of some kind of weird notion that the, those people should be privileged. It's for tax law reasons, okay? As a, as a nonprofit who gives out money, we are giving out grants that for some people, depending on your personal professional status, uh, uh, can be counted as income. Therefore, you have to legally be able to receive income in the U.S. It's just that simple. Okay, so that's the reason for that. Um, we prefer that uh, el uh, eligible applicants have not received a full ability to social engaged art fellowship in the last three years as an individual or a collective. We just want to spread the money around, right? 
Um, and eligible applicants will have projects that engage directly with the specific community or communities. And also, you have to have a website. A couple reasons for that. Um, one, we have, to find a, we have to have a way of looking at your work and the little sort of thumbnail things that you submit online to a lot of application processes tend not to tell a person very much. But also, uh, we believe that social media can be a really effective tool for socially engaged art practice. It doesn't have to be used, but it's something that's often used. And we want people who are conversant with that. If you don't have a personal website, it's okay. If you have something on retitle.com or something like that, but something that's like your own page where, where your work is centered, that, that's what we want to see, basically. So some link to some place where your work is cached in a digital form. Uh, fellowship participation is another key. This is not a grant, it's a fellowship. And what we're trying to create here is a community of artists who can mutually support one another, right? Um, so in terms of fellowship participation, we provide a sort of a mix of services, some of which are services that the, the fellows will uh, perform for one another in a way, and some of which we'll perform as an organization. Um, the Fellowship for Socially Engaged Art is an active year-long funding relationship. Fellows become active members in a cohort and participants in a program that features a range of services, which include a two-day orientation that explores ablative grasses documentation and assessment models and includes workshops on strategies for community engagement. Uh, this orientation will include a workshop from our documentation team. Uh, it will include um, a full range of, of self-assessment possibilities as well as the kinds of assessment that we like to engage in as an organization. I want to point out that assessment to us is not about judging. It's about learning. Um, and it's about learning how this kind of art works and providing an archive of information for other artists so that they can use each other's tools and to learn to be more effective, right? It's nothing to do with um, you know, giving you a thumbs up or thumbs down. Um, quarterly co-assessment meetings with other fellows will share project, uh, progress rather, and challenges and offer feedback to one another. And so, again, creating this cohort, right, of artists who are engaging in similar kinds of work. Um, support and feedback for ongoing self-assessment in the form of collaborative action research. That's a technique uh, that a lot of teachers use, and it's a way of examining what you do as you do it so that you're able to easily course correct in the process of your project. Um, assessment by an outside evaluator. Uh, we will also produce a short video documentary on each project. So that's this is something that we offer as a service. It's free of charge to the artist. But we do need your cooperation to help a little bit, right? We can't really do it without you. Uh, and so the team would want to interview you and show up at sort of key events that you select in collaboration with the documentary team uh, so that they're able to create a little narrative. So it's a three to five minute video. It's a narrative of your project. And it's a way of doing a couple of things. One thing it does is it helps us to build an uh, archive that talks about what this kind of practice can be and what it does, right? It helps to define the field a little bit. We fully expect that that archive will have a wide range of entries, so to speak. Um, and then it's a service to you. You get to do whatever you want to with that video, right? Uh, put it on your website, throw out the trash, right? Anything you want. Um, access to our conference room for meetings and Rather significantly, even though it's at the end, access to our broad network of specialists outside the art world. Ask us how we can help you connect with experts and issues your project addresses. We have a very, very well-connected board and very, very well-connected advisors, and we're very happy and they're very happy to share their contacts with you. Uh, and so if you're running up against a, a trick, you need a specific kind of city permit. You need information about a uh, certain environmental issue, whatever it is, ask us and we'll try to reach out to our network and see if we can pull in some people who will sit down with you and help you kind of through whatever issue it is you're facing with your project. Uh, application timeline and deadline. 
boring, but necessary. Uh, it's a two-step fellowship process. Finalists for the first round will be asked to submit a more detailed full application. The initial deadline is December 2nd, so you have plenty of time at this point. Uh, notification of semifinalists, uh, which will be accompanied by an invitation to submit the full application, uh, will be given on January 3rd, 2014. The deadline for the full application, which will follow, will be January 31st. We start with a letter of interest because we don't want you to bend over backwards 16 different ways if we're not really going to sit down and read that budget we ask you to produce. Uh, and so, it, again, it's an effort to try to minimize work as much as possible. Uh, they'll be interviews with finalists either by Skype, if they happen to be nationwide or in person if they're local, scheduled for February 24th to March, uh, March 7th, final notification March 31st, and something I want to point out is that the orientation is mandatory because that's part of that cohort building, right? That's part of the, the building of that support network between fellows. And so if, if somebody isn't there, it kind of spoils it for everyone a little bit, right? Um, and so this is something to mark on your calendars if you should choose to apply. So how we decide? A uh, panel of readers, uh, which may include curators, art administrators, uh, educators, mm -hmm. artists, and scholars uh, will review letters of interest and recommend up to 50 finalists. The letters of interest are only 500 words long, okay? So it's not something that's gonna hopefully take you three weeks to, to produce. Finalists will submit a full application which will be screened by a selection committee made up of a similarly diverse group. Uh, the selection committee actually also includes a community representative. So someone who has worked with artists in a community context before, but is not an artist or an official member of the art world, right? Not a card carrying license holder, as it were. Um, we'll, of course, screen final recommendations made by the selection committee as well. Uh, so the deadline again is December 2nd. Uh, all applications uh, must be received online. Applications received by other means will not be accepted or acknowledged. So if you choose to ignore this advice, your application just goes in the trash. We must receive everything online. The reason for that isn't to be a pain in the butt. The reason for that is that our readers and our selection committee members are from all over the country. They access this stuff online. We don't want to generate piles and piles of paper and be shoving, shuttling that sort of all over the country. When you put in your online application, they're able to access your application online and review it from the comfort of their own offices or homes, okay? Uh, so, slide 14, if you would. Application materials. Um, all applicants must submit uh, some basic things. One is um, a 500-word letter of interest. One is a very brief eligibility screening. Um, that's right uh, included in with the application, so you just sort of check off yes and no to the different questions that the questions we went through before. A link to your website with examples of past projects and a CV in PDF format. If, you, if there are many of you, uh, then you can link all the CVs together in a single document. Um, letters of interest. So these 500 word letters of interest um, <laughs> will address a number of things, we hope. Um, one, uh, these project fellowships uh, are supposed to fund artists who really take a leadership role and engage directly with communities to develop projects of ambitious scale that promote social change. So basically we want to sort of hear what the scale of your project is, we want to hear how you envision it promoting social change, which is a very broadly defined thing that you can, you can interpret at will. Um, you, as the, the project inventor, should be the project leader, in a sense. That doesn't mean you can't partner with other artists. It doesn't mean you can't partner with organizations. It doesn't mean you can't partner with community members. You can be part of a leadership team, right? Uh, but there should be a, a distinct place for you in the project. In other words, we don't want artists to become instrumentalized. We don't want you to, to act 
specifically and exclusively in the service of some other thing, right? We value you as professionals, and we want to foreground that uh, in the kinds of projects we fund. We do not fund projects focused on exhibition outcomes, artist residencies, or studio practice, unless explicitly geared toward um, direct social engagement. Carefully consider the guidelines, which I'll run through in a second. Statements of more than 500 words will not be accepted by the online form. Hit the word count button on your word processing program to make sure that you're not sort of, you know, expanding too far. Don't overwrite, don't drive yourself nuts that way. Uh, guidelines. So this is what shows up on the website, okay? When you go into apply. What's your proposed project? Describe the activities that you'll undertake to accomplish its goals. What are the project's goals, right? Articulate them as clearly and explicitly as you can, with the understanding that they may well change as soon as you start the project, right? We get that, but we want to hear that you have a plan in mind. Uh, how does your project enact social change? One of the reasons that this organization was funded was proceeding from the belief that artists are really important change agents in our society, okay? Um, and so that's why that question keeps coming up. Will the project be realized in the course of a year? If not, what do you expect to accomplish in the course of the one-year fellowship? A lot of these projects are multi-year projects. You may be applying for this at the beginning of your project, in the middle of the project, in the culmination of the project. Any of those are completely okay, okay? Um, we just kind of want to know what you're up to. We want to know what you're thinking. Uh, will your project engage with the community or communities in a collaborative or dialogic manner? Uh, so we want to know what interests you about the community. Maybe you live there. Maybe you have a fascination with a culture that's represented there. Who knows, right? Could be. Uh, describe the ways in which community members may be directly involved in executing the project goals. Instrumentalizing is the reason we ask this question. We don't want the communities to be instrumentalized either. We all know, you know a million stories of artists who go into a community and say, I have this great idea, why don't I pay you to build it for me, right? That's not the kind of project we're interested in funding. Right? We want things for collaboration. Um, and describe the community you're working with and the relationships you've established with members of that community. Or your plan for establishing those relationships if they're not yet established, right? The idea is just that you have a plan. We just want to see kind of where your, your thinking is going. Uh, and finally, good luck. Yay. <laughs> we want you to, to succeed. We want to fund more and more of these in the future. We're growing our donor base day by day. Uh, and so we hope to give up gazillions of these as, as the, uh, the organization unfolds. This year there are only seven, but there will be more. Uh, so I'd be really happy to take any questions you might have at this point, any, any concerns you might have, any feedback. Yeah. So you said this year there's seven fellowships? So, seven fellowships this year. Do you have examples of, did this exist last year? This is brand new. We're minting oh, it so fresh. So you can't look at any can't look at No, I can't look at past examples. However, um, do you want to flip back to housing? One, uh, one organization that has received a grant from us, not through this program, is Housing is a Human Right. It's a collective which is specifically designed around storytelling about housing. And the artists go in, they hear people's oral histories, and they put it together in uh, videos, they engage in activism. Uh, but they also present their work in other, <coughs> other forums. Um, and so that's an example of you know, one one single you know artist collective that, and one project that fit the bill. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking of working with, with a group of artists that I work with at a community-based organization that has multiple sites. Um, is that something that you would consider? And could we take this award as a group and apply that towards a larger project that's being funded by a community-based organization? Yes and yes, but. Uh, there are two different kinds of grants that we offer. Well, there are three, but two, two that are relevant to the question. One are grants for, to individuals and artist collectives. Another is grants to organizations. 
And so if you're applying through the organization, <coughs> then you want to apply for that kind of a grant. If you're specifically applying as an artist collective for a specific project, then you want to apply that way. Could we do both? No. You have to pick. Um, I'm curious if you always define community geographically um, in that do you want artists to be working with a certain neighborhood um, or could community be defined in a different way? This is, this is a really common question. Yes, it can be divide, defined in a different way, but we do want a, a real dialogue and we want real personal engagement. And so if, if your community is videographers interested in cats, right? that's not gonna probably get a grant, right? And so it has to be something where there's a real sense of community, communication and connection across, across people. Usually this happens within geographic proximity for practical reasons, but it doesn't necessarily exclusively have to be that way. Um, if uh, I apply with my collective, do we need to be fiscally sponsored? Uh, no, then, then what you're doing is you're applying as quote unquote an individual, and in that case, what we ask is that one person from the collective act as the fiscal representative, so to, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so we would, you know, mail a check to Mary Smith or whatever. I have a follow-up question to that. Um, would that person then be issued a, a 990 or like how is it? Yeah, okay, so that yeah. would be responsible for um, taxes. Yeah, and, and one of the key things here that I want to mention in that regard is remember when I talked about the flexibility that we have in terms of what, we, what we're, um, willing to fund, you can include the tax that will be deducted from that income as part of your budget, and so, so that person oh. doesn't get penalized. You know? okay. And it just depends on how, like, how you're set up. Some people are set up as sole proprietorships, and so their tax situation functions differently. But, yeah. uh, we work with a broad spectrum of the community, from like super privileged second graders to like people with autism. Is there any weight given to the type of community? Not necessarily. It's all. It's really about the quality of the project. Okay. Uh, are there seven um, fellowships total? Uh, individual and organizational? No. Seven individual fellowships. Three organizational fellowships. The organizational fellowships, too, for this year anyhow, are all New York City based. But the, the individual fellowships, you can be. Along that line, if, you, if the individual is elsewhere, are those uh, cohort meetings in New York? They are. However, um, depending on the circumstances, you know, we, we, we might fly people in for some of them. We might do Skype conferences for others. Um, but that's something that we'll address based on the needs of the specific seven people chosen, or seven people and or collectives chosen. Uh, a budget, a timeline, and we give artists the opportunity to expand on their initial letter of interest. So if you want to explain the project further, but we really encourage you not to go to that extra work unless you are, you know, you're notified. Of as far as media goes, um, it's just that I'm not always. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of my time here. No, we, we basically expect that to be sort of caught within the, the website. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And so if you want to you know, upload more stuff to your website at that point, you know, that's, that would be the way to do that. And you can let us know, you know, just say, hey, I, I threw some, some new stuff on there if you want to take a look. Do sponsor projects have to take place in New York City or around no. New York City? No. Anywhere? They could be on Mars if you can get there. Having other sources of funding be viewed, would that be okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It totally depends on the needs of the project. Some projects just need twenty thousand dollars, and they're you know somebody's really focused on the kind of services that we offer. Sometimes <laughs> the project's much broader. It's really going to be an individual situation, and because we understand the need for artists to be flexible within their own lives, we understand the need for ourselves to be flexible and deal with artists. And so. We're, we try to be as broad-minded as possible. Uh, organizations, is it okay if there is someone here, but it's the organization spread throughout the nation? The organization needs to be based in New York. Based in New York. Okay. 
it, like a, if it's a satellite op or if it's a, like an office thing, but then there's multiple. Offices. I think it would kind of depend. If, you know, anything that's that's real specific like that, where you think you have like a quirky situation, you can feel free to uh, to send emails to info at abladedgrass.org and just you know send us like a five line description of, of what you know the question is, and we're we're happy to um, to investigate that further. Which is not to say I'm trying to dodge it; it's just that I don't yeah, quite yeah. understand your situation. Totally. Hi, um, I believe you mentioned this, but I just want to double check that. So the projects can be at any stage. They could be ongoing, beginning stages. You bet. And outside of the US too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. As long as the person applying or the collective applying is able to legally receive income in the US. Another question related to that that often comes up is, what if I'm in a collective where half the people are Le are, can legally earn money in the U.S. and the other half can't. Okay, fine. So pick one of the people who can legally receive money in the U.S. to be your representative, right? Yeah. We don't need to know. <laughs> um, for the organizational grants, is, is there going to be a separate info session? Um... For the organizational grants, we've just posted, and there isn't a separate session. What tends to happen with organizational grants is usually we don't get more than 50 to 75 applications, whereas with the, um, the individual grants, we expect that we will receive more than that. And so we're actually really happy to talk to the organizations on sort of a case-by-case -case basis, because usually their circumstances are really sort of more radically different than those of artists, if that makes any sense, individual artists. So in other words, just shoot an email, and then if we need to do a follow-up, follow we will. Other questions? Okay, well, I'd encourage you to, to hang out, have some more wine, and um, introduce yourselves. Um, again, I'm Elizabeth Brady. I'm our, our uh, programs director. Anna Harsanyi is in the front row, all in black, um, and she is our programs coordinator. Munira Capra at the front desk is our programs manager. Um, and hopefully we will have um, Deb Fisher and Alan Stahl, and here sh Stahl are here shortly, but if not, they're, uh, they're certainly here in spirit and would be delighted to meet you. So, thank you so much.